Hello, my friend. Now, before I get started, I need to heat up a little bit. Okay, I'm Italian, so I need to heat up to get going. So, Da Vinci Resolve became a big name literally overnight amongst fusioners. Now, talking about names, did you know that Da Vinci is actually not a name? Yeah, it's not a name. If you didn't know, don't worry, it's not your fault. Because see, even highly educated people refer to Leonardo as Da Vinci. They don't even say Leonardo Da Vinci. They just say Da Vinci. Now, I'm Italian, and if I would translate Da Vinci for you, Da means from. Vinci is a town where Leonardo was from. Actually, it's Leonardo from Vinci, or of Vinci. That is because back then, not everybody had a family name, and Leonardo had a few rivals back then who ha happened to have the same name, so he wanted to distinguish himself from those, so he added Da Vinci to his name. Now, when you know that, Da Vinci Resolve all of a sudden gets a whole different quality, doesn't it? Now, if there would be another video out there deciding to make tutorials, I would have to think what I would add to my name. I mean, I have a family name, but I was thinking Vito Da Fusion. Let's dive right into it. Let me show you what you can create with the method I'm gonna show you today, not only in Fusion standalone, but also in Da Vinci. Let's bring this now I'm confused. Okay, so before I get started, let me show you where I'm coming from. Here. This is where I come from. See all that space right there? Hmm? All that space. Beautiful. And all gone. But it gets worse. Now, it happens that there are like left-handed people out there. And it happens that they have a vacant Cintiq. And it also happens that they're making tutorials. And it also happens that there is a microphone in front of their faces. And so it happens that we have to cross the whole monitor with our arm. And by doing so, we're almost eating up the microphone. With the release of Fusion, I think it was already eight, we could move this over and for a south part, this was beautiful. Okay, this was very beautiful. I guess we have to get used to it. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Let me show you what I have here. So I have my textures already loaded in. I will arrange to the grid here so it snaps. And let me show you. Now this used to be an HDR, but it happens that Da Vinci cannot read HDR maps, which is unfortunate. If you want to integrate Fusion into DaVinci, then you have to be able to load HDRs. At least I couldn't do it. I don't know. Maybe something just screwed up or so. I don't know. So I had to convert it to an EXR. But not that I needed an HDR for this project. I, I didn't. It just happened that I used this HDR image for this project. So when you load a footage into Fusion, DaFusion, whatever, then you have to make sure that it is converted to 16-bit float. Because we don't work in 8-bit. Uh, we leave that to the After Effects users. Yeah. You know, I, I have to shoot out some rants once in a while to keep my temperature at the right spot, at the sweet spot, where I'm most productive. To convert the footage, you can use a change depth mode. Now, I know in Fusion you can change this inside the loader itself, but I made this my habit not only for myself to, to know what I did when I opened the project file months later, but also for my people. Yeah, I want my people, especially the ones who are new to Fusion, I want them to see exactly what I did. Okay, and if I would do this in the loader, it might be that they oversee it. The change depth node, and then if the if you're working in linear space, 
you would also have to add a gamut node that you see right here and this is also something you could do inside the loader but again i expose it so that you know what i did the next thing i have here is a time stretcher now i'm not doing anything with the time stretcher so you ask why is it there then because i love dropping in notes no uh, the thing is in DaVinci Fusion, in Da Fusion, when I load in a texture and I go to another frame, it's not looping. So I, d I haven't found a way yet to uh, make this uh, loopable. Uh, I heard that you can do something with the clips, but that seemed to be a little bit uh, cumbersome. So what you can do is you can just simply use a time stretcher with its default settings right here, and by doing so, it will loop. Okay. Now that's also something you can do inside the loader. Now you can do time stretching, but you can set your time range, you can trim frames, you can decide what uh, to do with missing frames, and uh, and so on and so on. Yeah, we can do all kinds of things in the loader. Now here everything is gone, but it kind of makes sense because of uh, the workflow that Blackmagic has in mind. Uh, but I think maybe they should bring back a few of the important settings. Just, just a tip right there. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm being greedy and I think I can be greedy because I have the old time Fusion card. Uh, so I'm entitled to be greedy, just like the other old timers out there. Yeah. So I want to point out that I'm working in linear color space and by just looking at uh, my user interface you won't uh, see it, uh, especially because a button is gone, the LUT button, okay? So now the LUT button is somewhere here with this confusing grid. Um, it, this is probably supposed to be a table because a, a, a LUT is basically a, a table, uh, but this is so confusing, you seriously just just write LUT there, uh, don't need icon here. So uh, you can see now the gamut view is activated, uh, but you can also right click and here on the LUT you see it's enabled, it set the gamut view, and if I click edit, you can see that in the output space I have sRGB, okay? In the output space. On the contrary, here in this gamut node, it's in the source space. And what that does, if I may show, if I turn off the lookup table, I should probably put the time stretch in here, otherwise I can't show you. This is the image, how it looks. Now if I would activate the lookup table, the image becomes brighter. And by adding this gamut node here, it will become normal again. Now important to know is that this viewer LUT is not actually being embedded in your image. It's just a view alert, okay? So now I really want this lookup table button back, again being greedy, but I want it back because it's important to see whether my lookup table is on or not. So that you might wonder why I don't have a, a gamut in here. That's just because this is a, well, it's an EXR image. It was to, used to be an HDR image. There you don't put a gamut. Let me rearrange this. Usually you would do the change in gamut before anything else. Okay, so let's start with the window. So I wanna create this window, this wet window or dirty window. You decide what you want, if you wanna have a dirty or a wet window. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna blur this because I don't wanna see this cheesy background. So I would blur this uh, using a blur node and then I will probably use a color corrector and I will bring down the gamma. Now the next thing I wanna do is, you see the resolution is 750 by 37 nonsense. Uh, so the f what I wanna do is I wanna bring this into a final resolution and now I wanna show you something. Now I hook the image into a merge and I make sure that it's in the foreground. The background is in the background. So if it's not, just hit Control T to switch the input. Now I have this background image which has a resolution of Full HD and for this tutorial I wanted to work in a lower resolution, something like this. But check this out, if I copy this background node, it resets the resolution. Mm. And I don't know if that's a feature for, for DaFusion, but I think it's utterly ridiculous. 
and that is the same with the renderer, with everything that has a resolution settings. Because this is annoying and I don't want to change um, anything in the settings now, I will just go with Full HD. I will just, and I will risk having a very slow composition here, but let's risk that. So now you see that the image is way smaller than our work resolution. So what you can do is simply in the merge, you scale this up. Now I want you to be careful there. I know it's very tempting to use those settings because they're there, but for example, if you would change the foreground, the foreground all of a sudden uh, has a, a lower resolution, different aspect ratio, whatever, then those settings become obsolete and you might forget because it's not obvious that you change it in that in that node. So you, you would m render your preview that takes an hour or something and then you see this uh, craziness going on there and you're like, whoop, whoop what's going on there you know so uh, I usually don't recommend that uh, if you are absolutely certain that you don't change the texture resolution of the foreground then yeah as always if you know what you're doing you can do it uh, okay now I scale this up I have my window here and now to make this actually look like a window what we can use is the almighty very blur the very blur uh, by the way, one thing that I also dislike about... Now, I have to talk about things I dislike because I'm an old-time fusioner, so I'm entitled to that. So, um, you can see here now we have all kinds of uh, uh, very blurs in here, but the thing is, this is just a template, okay? So, if I bring this in, I get the whole template, which is, in my opinion, I don't like it, okay? I think the templates belong to a different spot, to a different place. Here and here, I want my tools only. Okay. <sighs> Greedy Vito. Yay! So I bring... <laughs> bring in the very blur. Bring in the very blur. Now, the very blur is just like After Effects compound blur. Hmm? The very blur needs a texture to be driven. So I will take this texture here. And the texture needs a contrast control so that you can adjust how it will be affected or how the variable affects the image, I should say. So you can use a brightness contrast. Uh, let me show you. Because the brightness contrast also has these this bar here that, that allows you to adjust the contrast and you can clip the blacks and stuff like that, you know, take out the saturation. Now you could also use that, but I like to use the bitmap mask simply because the bitmap mask allows me to do the same thing you know, clip black and white, but it also allows me to later on derive the mask from the other texture and then combine them, okay? It allows me to combine them, and that is pretty cool. So I could probably combine them, but I don't. I will drive two separate variables because that gives me just more control. So the bitmap mask I hook into the green slot, not into the blue, the blue is the mask. Okay, so you can mask out portions. So I hook it into the green slot and then I go to the very blur and I crank this up to 50 and change this to soft and important. Change the method to soft and it gives you a better result. Okay, now we have to adjust probably the contrast to th of this uh, texture to see an effect. And you can see we have an effect here. Let me turn off this toolbar. I'm crossing the screen here. If it doesn't show up, then just increase this a little bit more maybe. Mm. Another thing why this probably doesn't show up is because I've set this up for a uh, lower resolution. So I will just go back uh, to the original resolution uh, just to avoid this, this reset madness. So uh, I apologize for that, but this is life. It's what they say. A oh, thousand, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, it's, it's morning here, so my brain is still not working. So I'm just going with the flow. So you can see we get already some uh, very cool looking effect, but this is not the effect I wanted. It, at the moment, it doesn't look like glass. And you know why it doesn't look like glass? Because if that would be water streaks, where we had the streaks, the glass is actually clear. You can actually see through, okay? Because it wipes out the, the, the what's that called? The moisture thing, you know? Excuse me, but I'm not native English, so. But you know what I mean. Now, if you invert the mask, we sort of get the impression that this is a glass and we can look through, the light is shining through here, and in this area, it gets diffused. 
So this is looking pretty good. Let's try and see if we can get more variation in here. For example, this would be now the God made texture the streaks but now we want some man-made streaks for that i will use this texture here I, I should look for a better texture here that's not what i really like so if it's like human made then i guess it would be more like this here like a little bit random direction so this is probably not enough uh, let's see what we get okay so i hook this in nice and clean and well, let me just go in here in the transform rotate this just to see what we get mm-hmm bring this down and let me just turn off this one here so these streaks i want them to be more like dirt maybe now the effect has to be inverted where i have the streaks i want to to be diffuse so it's like a dirt layer on top of that it doesn't look so nice it could probably use a better texture or what we can do is after the resize, I bring in a grid warp. Mm, we do all kinds of action today in this uh, fusion, the fusion. So yeah, so I bring down the grid subdivisions and probably just increase the magnet size. And then I will just distort this a little bit, make it a little bit more random, uh, something like that. And I change to select it and then I select all vertices and hit shift S to make this more bend it now again you could probably find a better texture and let's see if we can change the blur mount so it gets a little bit stronger now you have to notice that where you have light you get more of the structure which is pretty cool because in real life that happens as well simply because the light is scattered in this area okay so that's pretty cool now you see i don't have enough resolution in here but you know in life we can't have everything so i will activate the variable again and so we get ah look at this it looks kind of nice so you see that though now we kind of destroy all the details we did get before we could either mask this out or just fiddle around here something like that maybe so we get a little bit of these streaks back and another thing we could do now this is the node based action here okay check this out okay so now i have this mask that drives this very blur and at the same time i just hook into a brightness contrast and i go in there and i crank this up i should view it probably and now i can simply increase the brightness a little bit just a little bit to make this thing come out or maybe seem like a dirt layer or something okay something like that i'm not sure just popped in my mind so <laughs> we see whether it works or not so this is pretty good already now let's take care of the text we want to have a text i will drop in a text 3d and i will write something like milky okay and i drop this in here and Let's see, where's my fit button? I don't, I don't know where the fit button is. So many things have gone. I mean, there's, I'm sure they're there. They're just hidden somewhere in outer space. Okay, I, I think I'm heated up now, so I should probably stop the rants. Otherwise, Black Magic will send me their man in blacks tomorrow. Okay, so Milky. Um, now, I want to set the camera. So, to set the camera, now you could now go in here and drop in a camera and do all these this crazy uh, manual adjustments until you have the camera you want. But you can also just simply set the viewport using the Alt key and on your vacant pen, uh, the right click, I think it is. You can set it the way you want it, something like that, for example. And then you simply bring back the toolbar and drag this camera right into the viewport and bang, look what happened. It generated a camera, hooked it in, with your text and you're ready to go you see camera 3d one that's very cool and by the way if you decide or if you change your mind which happens quite often uh, at least with me oh Vito, i want i want to have this camera here mm, yeah no problem okay you just select the merge where the camera is hooked in then you right click and choose camera copy pov point of view to camera 3d one 
okay by doing so it will change your camera to this angle now i don't do that because i i want to have this one next i will bring in a renderer and the renderer by default is set to software renderer which is good for shadows but not so good for other stuff so i would switch this to a opengl renderer because now i can take advantage of the accumulation effect which is the depth of field but i also have the super sampling settings which usually five is enough this is good and by the way it's well known that diffusion currently is uh, very 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 unstable uh, when using the gpu so you should probably deactivate it in the in the preferences where it says or use fusion only on cpu that means that actually the software renderer is faster than the opengl renderer at least it was the case with uh, here okay so now if i render this we get this white uh, silhouette this is simply because we have Lighting not activated, shadows not activated. So if we activate this, of course, we also will need a light. So I bring in the spotlight. There was it again, another template. And now in the right viewer, I will set a perspective view and I will adjust my light to something like um, this. So I want the text to be illuminated when it comes close to the camera. Uh, so we should probably animate it first, yeah. Yeah, it's the morning. So I bring in a transform 3D and I will animate my text first. In the transform, I will arm the Z offset by right clicking on the ribbon animate. And I will bring this back, something like this. And then I go to a, I just hit play and I try to feel the frame. I, I, t I try to feel the frame. Maybe here, bring this forward. And I open up the spline editor, drag this out a bit. And now I want this to loop. So I select the first key, hit control, and I just drag this over and select all keys, shift S and select all keys and right click set loop and bang, we have a loop. And now let me see how this looks. Now you probably want to let this cache so you see the actual speed. That's not bad. Let me adjust the curves a little bit to smoothen this out. Ah, okay, let's go with this one. Additionally, you could add some rotation, but yeah, you go ahead and do that. I won't. So now I want the text to be illuminated when it comes right in front of the camera, which is about here. Maybe we can bring it like forward like this. And now inside the light, in the spotlight, uh, we increase, here comes the, the word I, I like so much, penumbra angle. Uh, it sounds like an African, like an African uh, town or something, African village, penumbra. <laughs> penumbra. Hmm. So penumbra angle and maybe drop off and we could also try a linear fall off, which is a little bit more realistic. Uh, most realistic is probably quadric. Yeah, now we get a nice smooth transition here that's not bad it's not bad so in the render i always make sure that the texturing is set to float 16 here in the hidden i don't understand why this thing is still hidden it's always hidden since since uh, the first version of fusion so this set this to float 16 now if you don't it will inherit the bit depth of your textures and if they happen to be integer 8 or whatever then you will get clamped results so and here in this tab make sure to set the depth to float 16. now you don't need to go to float 32 i see people sometimes working in float 32 but i believe that the difference will only be visible to an ilm technician with his gadgets and instruments but i don't know maybe i'm talking out of my ace okay so here we go now we want to add some color here to this text so we could either do this in the spotlight itself or in the text doesn't really matter usually it would be the the spotlight so you would give the text a color and by the way i think the color wheels disappeared i want them back no color wheels anymore this is very disturbing and you could go into the light and just crank this up to something hot and one thing I notice all the time is that people 
they think that they can only go from 0 to 1 in the color, which is not correct. Okay, and it's not recommended. Because if you work in float, you can go up much higher here. Okay, this will give you much, much more realistic results when working with glows and stuff like that, you know. So don't don't be too shy with those values, okay. I can prove it to you by bringing in a soft glow, you know. So you see now we get this very nice glow, but if I would go back and I would set this to 1-1, one, one, look how cheesy the glow looks, okay. Now I see people then going into the glow and increasing the stre the gain and then using the color here, but this is not the same, okay? This is why many soft glows out there I'm seeing look cheesy. Hmm? All right, don't do that. This is a secondary thing here, secondary adjustment. Let's just kick this away. And again, I put this to eight, uh, maybe put this to uh, two, Okay, so this is the text. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, we want the text to be out of focus when it's not closed by the window. So I check the accumulation effect and immediately you wanna go up to a high number here. This is probably not enough, uh, 64. Sometimes you get away with eight, depends on the project. But we also wanna adjust the focal plane. So I select the camera and to see the focal plane, we actually have to open the, uh, not the film back, the control visibility and check the focal plane. Okay, and now the focal plane I will bring back to where the focal point is. Show about here. Make sure if you make this project, make sure that the back of the text is faded out because this will give you a very nice effect later on. Something like that. And let's see how it looks far away. Ah, blurred nicely. Ah, that's pretty good. Text is done, I guess. So let's see how we can combine this with our window. First, I will sort of create a bloom. So I bring in a blur node and I blur this text quite a bit and I will add this on top here. Now I showed before that the add operation usually I do with a boolean instead, but in this case, it's it's rather creative work than technical work, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you can choose both. In the merge tool, you won't find an add operation in here. The way you do add is by using the gain slider and you bring it all the way down to zero. So I add this on top. Actually, I want this to be affected by the variable. Where is it here? So we probably wanna move this down down, 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 and then before the very blur, we hook this in. Now it will be affected by this, and mm, look how beautiful this looks. You see, now the, the texture gets more, way more present down here because we have a light. This is almost like real, almost like physically accurate. Okay, so next thing, uh, we wanna add the text, of course. This is just a bloom. So to add the text, we could either just put the whole text as it is, this one here, on top of everything. Something like, okay, there you go, crash. Uh, what can I say? This is a beta, crash is too much, uh, but let's continue here. Next, I wanna add the text, and for that, I could just slap it on like this, this text here, uh, this one here, but I will split it up into the shadow element and the light element and this is because I just want to have more control so I just copy over the background here and now from the renderer I just hook straight into the background's mask tool and by doing so if I display the checker underlay you can see that now we we get the text but as a silhouette and it will take the color of the background tool you can also use a gradient if you like now this is the shadow element so I will simply put this on top here, set this to multiply and take away the gain a little bit and let's see how this looks. Uh, look, looks like something is behind the glass, very beautiful. So and next we want to add the text, make a little space and let's hook this in here, make a router by pressing alt and there we have the text. Now let me see how this looks. Okay, so here we simply want to add this. 
so we will have only the light okay if i turn off the shadow element you can see it's only the light and we might want to blur this just a little bit because it's behind the glass so let's see how it looks okay now the text is completely gone <laughs> it's almost not uh, visible so what we could do is we could uh for example here we could reduce the the blend a little bit to make it come through for example like this just a little bit it doesn't have to be uh you don't want to get rid of all the beautiful details here and the same goes for let me see if this affects no this doesn't affect it so we can leave that alone this is probably here too sharp i mean of course if we blur we can't read the text but it would be more realistic actually you can also go into this light pass here you could use a very blur in here and simply do the same you can um, distort this one as well and notice what happens here you see now the, the effect gets cut off and this is because of the dom domain of definition. You can display that. Uh, you could display it by with a click of a button. Now you have to go into this menu. And the thing is now, uh, although it doesn't display it, uh, Fusion is automatically creating the domain of definition around this text. And I, I, I can't tell you why it's now not showing it. So what the variable does is basically it cuts off where the domain ends. Uh, so what you can do is in after the blur you simply bring in a set domain and you set it to set and bang okay now this is way too much so i will try to bring down this and You could also try bringing in a mask and taking this mask here and now this is going to be hardcore but you could basically say that you want the effect to be a little less here so we soften this out and do something like this so now the text is more readable That is looking pretty good. Another thing I want to do at this point is now we have this light hitting the text, but we can't really see the effect of the light on the window. Of course, we could now do a very complex setup, but we can also just give the impression that there is a light uh, by using the background node again. And I will pick this color here and by the way so you see that i picked the color orange here but it, it, the color is red now this is because the true color at the moment is actually this okay so it picked the correct color here so just make sure that you are aware of the lookup table and so i will add this now on top again and i will smooth this out to something like four and something like maybe very broad something like here like the light is hitting from the left notice that now this light doesn't seem to have enough texture we probably should put this also in front of the very blurs i take the whole uh, group here and i shift insert it here now again make sure that this your flow is easily readable rearrange your stuff and you will be good so, but it's still not really visible, okay? So what we can do is here after the background, we bring in a brightness contrast and we use again this mask and we brighten this up a bit. Brighten, darken, maybe let's darken this. So, okay, yeah, it's looking good. So now I wanna show you something very awesome. Let's animate the camera. 
So I will just go into the camera in the transform tab and I will right click on the ribbons and I will choose modify with perturb. Modify with perturb and for this one as well. Modify with perturb. Let's check our animation. I want this to be stronger. So I hop over to the modifiers, open them up and I click reset button a few times the speed ah uh, let's let's just take that now we should be having this animation but the problem now is that uh the textures here they are not in 3d space they're just still 2d uh, textures okay so to simp to put them into 3d space we can simply use a image plane image plane 3d and the only thing we have to do is we put this whole thing on an image plane and then we put this image plane together with our camera. So I put the camera up here, hook this in here. And let's see. So now the image plane is there and I want to see it with the text. So let's hook the text temporarily in this perspective view. So the image plane, I want to be far back and very big. And let's copy the renderer over here and make sure that you turn off the uh, accumulation effects. We don't need them here and the light. We also don't need them. So let's see what we have. Something is wrong with my bit depth here. Texture is set to 16 bit. I thought I would, I changed it, but okay. So now we have our animation and the background image is also moving according to the camera and uh, let's remove the text and we're good now we have the texture in 3d space and all we have to do is hook the renderer into the merge into the same stream and everything is good nothing changes you don't have to change anything here it's all just as good as it was before so next i would say we do the same with the other textures so on to the image plane into the mask i use a root up here so i don't have to go down not router router and then i make a router here i think router is the german word <laughs> Okay, and I do the same here, onto an image plane, create a router and hook this in here, delete the router, and then... Okay, so, and don't forget the camera, and now we're good. So, with such simple steps, we put all textures into 3D space, and now we have our animation. However, I should probably put the image plane now, actually, in the front, and make this small just so we have the correct parallax, but it probably doesn't even matter with this project. Something like that. And I will copy this plane and replace this one in here. And we should be good. Okay. Hmm, not too shabby. Let's actually also do this with this one here just because we enjoy this so much. So here we have this texture and bitmap mask. Hook this into the bitmap mask. And let's actually use another variable. I hit the save button. And let's see what happens with this one here. Maybe invert it. Mm, actually not. maybe like this and i will increase this way stronger so we get all the details here that is looking pretty good okay next i'm going to show you something very awesome it's so awesome you can even impress your grandmother let's say i want to have a light in there so the way i do that is simply with the same construction here i copy the background with the ellipse hook it in between and set this to alpha gain zero and then what I do is I bring this up here. Let me change the color here. So I will display this and now I will... No, actually I don't want to use this color. Let's use maybe a 
This color matches pretty good, but it might not look good as a light. Let's bring down the softness. Oh, well. Well, let's try this. So let's say we have this light down here, this fancy light. Again, don't be too shy with these values. So go, you can go over one here. Let's uh, look how nice this looks. Look how this pops. Maybe it was too much. 2.5 and a little bit increase in the blue. Actually, it's nice like that. Okay, so now we have this light, but the light now is not moving with the camera because it's still 2D. Now, I don't want to put this on an extra image plane. What I can do instead is go to the, our 3D space. I view this and we can use a tool called Locator. Okay, and the Locator is just for that kind of stuff. What the Locator does, it, it will transfer 3D coordinates of a location to a 2D environment. Okay, hope that makes sense. But if not, then it will right now. Okay, all you have to do is you take the merch that has the camera hooked in and you hook it into locators scene input. By the way, on release, press Alt to get the menu. Okay, now that's all we have to do. Now I go to the ellipse mask that I just created and where it says center X, Y, simply right click and choose connect locator position. And it will automatically jump to the locator's position in 3D space. Now we can just go to the locator, put the locator far back and move it over. And look at that. Now I try to avoid intersecting with the text. Otherwise I would have to mask it out. Okay, so that was basically it. And now what you can do is you can take all your swag and you could either do your color correction here. But I would say now that we are in DaVinci anyway, why don't we do it in the DaVinci color page? I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why it was integrated in the first place, right? So I got to warn you, I'm not a colorist, nor am I profound with, uh, da, um, with da Vinci. Uh, so I'm just just want to show you the possibilities okay so if you're a colorist and you're doing this tutorial you go ahead and do your magic if you're new to my channel my name is Vito you probably already know so I devoted myself to creating fusion content this is simply because I love what I'm doing I think that if you watch my tutorials especially the newer ones you can see that I love what I'm doing now sometimes you might see me doing this kind of things like uh, like this Yay! things like that this is this is not something just a just fake to draw attention or whatever this is just this is just me okay i even talk to babies like that Let's bring this one particular thing I, I liked about pirates was their freedom they were free and they uh, had their own pace and they could do whatever they wanted to do so this is something that i always uh, like very much about pirates if you like my content if you like what i'm doing please consider supporting me on patreon you will only get the tutorials earlier than the others uh, you will also get project files, slap comps, you will get to join the giveaways. Uh, sometimes I will have uh, discounts on certain things. Probably the most interesting thing is the fusion competitions. Now, until now I had only one competition, but another one is approaching. Yeah, and it's gonna be the best till now. It's gonna be the best. You will be able to win a Blackmagic pocket camera. Uh. So, but you need to be in the $10 tier to be able to join. Uh, so make sure to check that out. By the way, you will find more information on that soon on my website, which is www.con-fusion.net. No, I did not copy Video Copilot. Confusion.com was not available. Yeah. Make sure to become a site member so that you get the newsletters, especially with the upcoming Fusion Challenge. Okay, so, with that said, my name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, yeah, enjoy what you're doing. Hey, you wanna be a pirate? Get all kinds of booty.